Thank you very much. First of all, I must thank the Northwest Coast and especially Tricia Roberts for giving me this opportunity to share with you of something which we have been able to, what I've said is there a design and then we had to unfortunately redesign a pathway as I will show you later on. And as it consists, the pathway is being made for a particular drug. So I thought I will tell you a bit about the drug first. The drug in question is denosumab. It is a drug which we use in treatment for osteoporosis. And it is indicated both in primary as well as secondary prevention of osteoporotic fragility fractures. It has to be given by subcutaneous injections every six months. The drug came into use towards the end of 2010 when it was accepted by the NICE through their technology appraisal 204 and which recommended the use of this drug both in primary as well as secondary prevention of osteoporotic fragility fractures. They did have some restriction of use which we have to maintain but because of the strength of the drug and the paucity of treatments available for osteoporosis this became quite popular very soon. I've told you about the drug. I would also like to tell you about a bit about the service which we offer in our own trust. Our trust provides or looks after about 350,000 patients in North Liverpool. And we run a very busy osteoporosis service, which we call as metabolic bone disease service. And you can see from the data how busy the service is that we see around 1,000 new patients every year, which are referred from primary care we also run a fracture liaison service. That means that anybody presenting to entry hospital with a fragility fracture will be screened for osteoporosis and offer treatment if necessary. And also it referred internally from other departments of the, of the hospital. <coughs> Apart from these thousand new patients, we, all, we follow up about 2,000 osteoporosis and other metabolic bone disease patients regularly in our clinics. So the rationale for this service or this pathway which we designed was that because of the, as I said, the popularity of the drug, very soon we realized that there are about 200 patients annually who come to us regularly for their six monthly injections and for which we had to schedule extra clinics because if it is six monthly it has to be six monthly because they can't wait nine months or ten months patients problem was that every time they have to have an injection they just have to come to the hospital look for a parking which may be a problem as you know in most trust and i'm i'm afraid it's also a problem in our trust as well and in any case, most of these osteoporotic patients are very elderly patients, and it is not easy for them to come to hospital just to get an injection, which takes about a minute. The third thing, of course, was that the priority which the NHS England and all the NHS health department stresses that the time spent by the patient in hospital should be minimal and we should provide services nearer to the patient's home. So this, we had to find a solution. 
So what we did was we, to help us in our resource and capacity issues, we thought, why can't we get this six monthly injection back to the community where the patients can go to their own primary care physician and get the injections done rather than coming back to the hospital every six months. And it will help them. It will help many of the points or ideas of NHS England, which are also of the Northwest Coast as well. And that's what we did. And this is the process. I will take you through this because we did have a hiccup in the middle. If you see that, this is where the, the denisumab was approved by the European Medicine Authority. The NICE gave it an approval in October 2010. By 2012, middle of 2012, we realized that we have got a large cohort of patients who need the six monthly injections. So we must do something if we can put them back into the community care. <clears throat> So by late 2012, we almost reached an agreement with the primary care that these patients can be treated or get their six monthly injections in the community. And that was possible because the Pan Mercy APC in 2011 gave an ember category to denisumab. Amber category in their traffic light system, classification system, is considered suitable for GP prescribing following specialist initiation and recommendation. So once we had this amber classification, we thought that we will be able to send these patients to the community. And in fact, we designed the letters and everything explaining the drug to the, to the general, general practitioner and telling them that this is what is needed to be done. But unfortunately, in October 2012, the MHRA came out with an alert that this drug can cause hypocalcemia. So you should be very cautious. The general practitioners became alerted. We were also alerted about it, and we thought that it's not going to work. We have to be careful. If we just send every patient to the community, we have to make sure that the proper precautions are taken. So we had to move back from there, and all the patients came back to the secondary care. And then we had to decide what we are going to do. The recommendations were that you check the calcium levels a week before the drug is injected, a week after the drug is injected, and make sure that the calcium levels have been normal before and they haven't gone down following the injection. It took us some time discussing with the CCGs and the, the community pharmacists and all, and they were, because it, it was a new thing, they were not very um, uh, happy to accept it after one injection. The data showed that patients who, can, who have had one or two injections and have not had hypocalcemia, and if their calcium levels are maintained to a normal limit, they should not have this later on. So, in the end, <clears throat> then we again went back to the Mercy, the Pan Mercy APC and the different CCG and the, the, the pharmacy advisors and all, and we agreed that we will give first two injections in the secondary care. Make sure that the patient is not getting any hypocalcemia, and there is no danger of this side effect. And only then we'll be able to transfer the patient's care to the community. And that's where we are now. In December 2014, we updated the service and we launched by a transfer of care agreement with the CCGs. Now this is the result we have now, and this is in practice. You can see that, that <coughs> from our own hospitals, fracture laser service referred from the, 
from the GPs when they come, if they qualify or if they need this particular drug, if the decision is made, then the calcium levels, we check them. If they are normal, if not, we give them drugs to bring it up to normal levels before the drug is given. The drug is given and then we check it following that and the next injection again and you can see that at least two doses of denosumab administered in the secondary care before this transfer of care is, is or the care is transferred to the primary care. And this is where we are and this is what we are following now. But it does have problems if the patient is unsuitable for management or in primary care, like patients who have got uh, chronic kidney disease and all, or who need proper fo regular follow-up, we keep them in, in, in secondary care itself and keep on giving them injections there. But if they are deemed suitable for management in primary care, we send the patient's care recommendations, telling the GP what is expected and what they should be doing, and also offering our services that if ever, whenever there is any problem, please let us know and we will see the patient again back in secondary care without any, without any delay. We have given our own telephone number, our osteoporosis nurse telephone number that they can always contact and refer the patient back to us. In all this, it was a collaborative process involving of course, our own um, uh, osteoporosis service, for which I'm the lead, with, but we had the help from the hospital business manager, hospital pharmacy, and of course, the Pan Mercy APC, and three CCGs with which we have to deal on a regular basis. The, the, the benefits which we anticipate here is the patient, for the patients, the treatment is closer to home. And I've had one or two patients who have remarked that, oh, that's very good. I just don't have to come to the hospital just for an injection. We, this has helped us to release capacity. We can see more patients. We can lower our waiting times for other patients. And GPs also, they are quite happy that it is reduces cost related to outpatient administration. And of course, they can oversee the overall or see, oversee the overall management of the patient's care. And of course, it fits in with the NWC points that the aging population and the budget restraints and what we should be trying to do is to shift to the community care. Thank you very much. I'm a